Hello, everybody. Hello. Can you guys hear me okay? Very good. Mickey is not here today, so we'll have to do magic time together. You'll have to help me with this one. Ready? Welcome, ECS 16A. Woo! We can do it. Oh, yeah. Like it. Anyway, uh, Mickey says hello. He is uh, feeling under the weather. Let me tell you, I was like under the floors uh, last week, but um, I'm feeling better now. I decided that the best I could do was to stay home and uh, not give what I had to anyone. It was way worse than COVID, but it wasn't COVID. But I'm here. Um, I might still cough, but um, I'm pretty sure I'm not contagious anymore. Okay, today we are going to start or restart module two. Uh, by now, you should have all the content that you need uh, for midterm one. Uh, all the homework and all the preparation that you need for midterm one is um, in your hands. And uh, we start um, learning things uh, for the rest of the class. 
uh, which eventually will turn into midterm two. But we think about that later. Very good that you're coming to class. I hear that some people uh, decide that uh, when there is a midterm, they, you don't need to come to class because you know you have to study for the midterm. And then what happens is when you come back to class, the mod module two is so far out that you don't know what's going on. So good job, right choices. So let's revise. What did we, did we talk about last time that we were talking about circuits or when we start? We're basically defining things. So I talked to you about charge, about um, all the electrical uh, quantities that we were going to be looking at and studying, and especially playing with when we are in the lab, current, voltage, and resistance. Um, we established that current was flow of electrons, and we also played around here with some uh, uh, pretend electrons, uh, that in order for that movement uh, of electrons to happen, which is what we do when we are designing an electronic device, we decide how and when the electrons are going to move, uh, you needed a driving force. And that driving force is voltage, right? And you can tune the voltage and with that you can control the current, but the current will flow e more easily or less easily depending on the resistance that it finds in the material. And that's a property of the material. There are material that are, uh, the materials that are more conductive, those materials are going to be um, uh, moving electrons more easily with less resistance. There are materials that are more resistive or less conductive, and then you are going to see high resistance there. Okay, uh, charge. Charge um, can be either positive or negative. Uh, typically, we think about charge electrons, which are negative, but actually, the absence of an electron is a positive charge. What's that called? What's, uh, what's the opposite of an electron? Positron. Not really, it's a hole. And the hole is a positive charge. Um, so, and a positive charge that can move. How do holes move? If the holes is the absence of electrons, Holes only move when electrons are moving, right? So let's say when you are standing in traffic and there is cars, let's pretend the cars are electrons, right? If the electron or the car moves forward, a hole is formed, right? Then the other car moves forward, the hole moves back. Another car moves forward, the hole moves back. So that's, that's a positive charge. So the charge can be negative or positive. Electrons are holes. If you take the semiconductor classes, you're going to deal a lot with uh, electrons and holes. Um, then, what else did we see? Okay, measurement. The, the units that we measure charge is Coulomb. And, um, and current is how that charge is changing with time, right? So um, it's a measurement of the amount of charge that passes through um, a, a certain cross-section, which could be our wire, uh, during a period of time. And that's why here I have that uh, the current would be the net amount of charge um, through some cross-section. What's the cross-section? Is if I, if I take a wire and I cut the wire and I look at the wire right here, that's the cross-section. So I'm looking how many electrons are, looking here, uh, are moving here. Uh, through a period of time. So uh, we have here that uh, that would be then uh, the gradient of charge over time, coulomb per second, okay? That's current. So current, when we look at current so that the unit is amperes, you have to remember that it's also coulomb per second. In some uh, occasions, you need to remember that. I also talked to you about conductors, semiconductors, and insulators, and I told you uh, the difference between conductors, uh, semiconductor and an insulator for us, as far as we were concerned, was just the energy that was needed to take an electron that is in its resting state, 
relaxed state of energy, which is what we are now, to the, an excited energy state, which would be when you all stand up. Remember, I made you stand up and you're like, what? Right? So just a representation. So how hard it is for the electron to get to higher levels of energy where it's considered in an excited state of energy is um, the difference between a conductor and a semiconductor. In an insulator, you should not be able to get the electron there um, because the insulator should not let electrons move freely. Great, okay, we also defined other things, uh, which was some of the elements that we are going to use in our models, because that's what we are going to be doing here later. Once we have all the basics, all the vocabulary and the special tools that we need, we are going to make, uh, make some designs. So we looked at elements uh, that we could use in our designs. And one way of uh, looking at the property or how that element would <coughs> behave is to look at the IV curve. What's the IV curve? Was when you look at how a current is changing as you change the voltage. So you will measure the current and you will change the voltage and see what happens there. And different elements or different, um, uh, different elements that we're going to use in our design will behave um, differently. So let's uh, remind ourselves here of the elements that we played with. Um, first, the one that is difficult to see, voltage source. So what was the voltage source? Voltage source is a battery, something that you know the voltage, you know that it's going to be giving that uh, uh, driving force for the electrons. So the IV characteristics of a voltage source would be uh, a given voltage. And the current um, will depend on whatever we set outside. Now, I see that I'm not the only one coughing, huh? Hold on. <coughs> All right, now others, um, current source. Current source who is also a provider of uh, uh, energy for, for, the, for the circuits in order to move those electrons. So the current source, IV curve, the current source will be giving a constant current and the voltage will be defined by our external circuit. Then the resistors, um, we saw that the resistor followed a law uh, that showed us a curve that's um, uh, a straight line uh, that um, would give us the value of the resistance of the element. What's that law? Ohm's law. Very good, Ohm's law. And then if we looked at the inverse of the slope of this curve, we got the resistance. <coughs> so that was the IV curve for the resistor. Wire, what was the special about the wire? Why was the wire a cool element to have? Just uh, project because we don't have a, a microphone. No voltage, right? Um, so we could define that the voltage was zero and then the current would be defined by the external circuit, yeah. You will see many of our designs will say, oh, we put a wire here, and we know voltage is zero. And then which one is missing? Open circuit. What's important about open circuit? Open circuit, you know that current is zero. Very good. If the current is zero, then you know that, least, um, that the voltage is going to be um, um, defined by the external circuit. We also talked about nodes and junctions. Uh, what are junctions? Junk junctions are everywhere. So if I have a resistor, I have many junctions inside that resistor. Um, if I have um, a resistor connected to a voltage source, there is a junction where they meet. There are junctions inside the resistor. There are junctions inside the voltage source. What we are going to mostly use here is nodes, the notion of nodes. And uh, how do we find the nodes? Well, <coughs> we were finding the nodes by looking at what's the path that you can take between two elements. And then you define that as a node. And then here, 
another path that you can take between two elements. Then another path that you can take between two elements or before you meet another element and another one. So in this example here, <coughs> I have four nodes. <coughs> so today, we are going to look at some rules that um, we use to analyze circuits. I'm going to teach you how to get to an algorithm that you can program a computer to solve a circuit, to simulate a circuit. Um, and then I'll show you how humans actually do it. Uh, <coughs> because, you know, most of the time we are going to be doing it ourselves. Um, there are many tools uh, available today, commercially available tools um, that one can use to simulate circuits and I will also tell you about those tools. But I'll show you how you can, uh, you can get to an algorithm that you can then program a tool to do um, uh, circuits for you. Um, then, as I said at the beginning um, of the last lecture that I taught, um, this module is very matched with your labs. So everything that I'll be teaching you here, you're going to be doing in the lab, it's pretty cool. Okay, let's do it. So we started the, <coughs> the first rule for circuit analysis, the Kirchhoff voltage law, which said that voltage, the sum of the voltage across all the elements in, a, in the loop um, is equal to zero. And we did this example together right at the end of class, right? And then I had a question for you, oh, what's V3? Uh, voltage and element three. And then uh, there were several answers. So let me remind you what we did. <coughs> we defined, because we're learning, we defined that we had four elements here. <coughs> I'm going to speak a little bit um, lower. Let me know if you can't hear me, just to make sure I have voice by the end of the class. Okay, so um, we decided that we had four uh, elements. One was um, a voltage source, the other was a resistor, those were the two obvious, and then two wires. And we are going to stop looking at the wires um, as such, but to learn, it's good to consider the wire. Then we said, okay, since we have four elements, we know that there will be a voltage across each one of these elements, which we named V1, V2, V3, V4. And then we applied the law. Okay, so if I start at this point here, and I'm going to go around the loop, I'll say, the sum of the voltages is going to be equal zero. However, I have to remember the definition of voltage, and voltage is difference in potential. And the potential, we always have to look uh, from where we are going. Are we going from low to high, or are we, going or are we losing potential? So uh, if we go from low to high, that's positive. If we go from high to low, that's negative. And that's what we did here. So. Starting here, let's go around the circle. So we are going from minus to plus. That is positive. So we say V element one. Then we go here from plus to minus. Negative, minus V element two. Then we go from here down, plus to minus. Negative, minus V three. Here, plus to minus, negative minus V4. And we got to this, which essentially said that the voltage going from this point to that point is equal to the sum of these voltages, right? The other voltages. <coughs> and all of them together is zero. Okay, and then I asked you, what's V3? Uh, and there were many questions, how many answers? So let's see. We know that V1 is Vs, right? because it's the voltage across this element, this element is a voltage source. So that was a given. My question is, what was V3? Then we have this equation here that says, okay, V1 minus V2 minus V3 minus V4 equals zero. Um, what's the voltage across a wire? Zero. What's the voltage across this wire? 
0. So what's V3? V element 3 equals V equals Vs. Very good. You could also have said it's Ohm's law R3 times I3, but we didn't talk about currents yet. Okay? All right. Now, new stuff, new law. <clears throat> okay, new law is the current law. We are going to use the current law a lot too. So we say the current law says uh, that the current flowing into any junction must be equal to the current flowing outside of the junction. Now, oh, here comes the junctions again. So let's look, okay, where do we have junctions here? For sure, we will have, I will mark again our, our uh, junctions. So for sure, we'll have a junction here, we'll have a junction here, since we're considering these four elements, right? So where we connect the four elements, we twist them together, it's a junction. There is a junction inside the resistor, as I told you. There are junctions inside the, the current source. Now we have a current source, just to change up a bit. So, if I say that my current source is uh, element one, um, then I'll say, okay, there is a current uh, coming out of, um, of this element, which I'm going to call I element one, okay? Then, um, there will be a current um, going here in our wire, which I'm going to call I element two. There will be a current uh, going here into the resistor, which I'm going to call I element three. And another current going here on our other wire, which I'm going to call I element four. If you have done circuits before, hold tight. This is just to get everybody to the same page. All right, so applying this law, what, we, what do we have? We go to a junction, so I'm going to pick this junction here, okay? The top. Uh, what does, this, uh, what do, does the law say? Well, current getting into that junction has to be equal to the current getting out of the junction. That tells us that I element one is equal to I element two. Easy? <coughs> Then, applying for the other junction, we have coming in I element two, going out I element three. Applying to the next junction, we have going in I element three, going out I element four. And then finally, we have I element four going in, which is going to be equal to I element one, which is going out, right? Simple, simple stuff. What if my junction looked uh, something like this? I have a point here, and then I have one wire going this, oh, without the, one wire there, and then I have wires like this, where I would have, let's say, I element five here, I element six here, what would happen? Once it gets to that junction, then there is a current that will be going that way, which I'm going to call I element seven. And what's I element seven? I five per plus six. <coughs> Easy? We're going to play a lot with this. Just uh, laying the law. Okay, now there is uh, another interesting thing that we have uh, to uh, pay attention here, which is, um, if you want to um, apply this uh, uh, current law, you can apply within the element, and there are rules for the element. So if I have an element like this, um, this rule says the same, that the current going into a junction, because the element has junctions, has to be equal to the current going out of the junction. So I can represent the current going into this element like this. Uh, I'll just say I element for the general elements that we have here. Or I, have, I can represent the current going out of the element like I did this. 
Okay, in my simple example here, I had some current going in, some current going out, right? Both are okay. But there is a rule that you have to follow, which is the I element always goes into a plus. I will write here, goes into a plus and or, or, uh, goes out um, in a negative terminal, okay? And you're going to hear and play with this a bit in the homework. This is called a passive, passive sign convention. So today, what we are going to do is, we are going to play with the algorithm and one of the steps in the algorithm is that we are going to randomly place the currents. And then once you randomly place the currents and then you're going to put the plus minus of the voltage, you have to remember this, okay? So it's the, it's the hardest thinking we're going to have to do today is to remember this. So the current goes into the, uh, into the positive terminal and goes out in the negative terminal. What does this mean? Convention, convention. Because if you have this convention and then you apply the convention and you're consistent, you follow the rules, you get to the end, you have a negative sign as a result. What does it mean? Oh, the current is the other way around. And that's fine. Everything was right, it's just the sign, the direction was different, right? Somebody made up that rule to make things easier. So we follow it, okay? So good, so far so good. So let's do the first example. Simple, simple circuit. We are going to follow step by step, tediously, but believe me, if you think circuits are going to be difficult, you can stop that uh, nonsense now because if you follow this rule, it's, um, you're going to be able to analyze any circuits that I give you and um, and then you were, you're going to build up an intuition that you're also going to be able to understand other circuits, okay? And then you can take uh, shortcuts. So if you're studying with someone and they know all the shortcuts, close your ears until you get to that point, okay? Don't take shortcuts until you know what the shortcuts mean. Okay, so let's follow the rules here. Um, this is in your notes. Step one, we are going to pick a node and label that node as a reference. Why? Because remember, voltage is measured with reference, right? Voltage is different in potential. So we need to know where is my potential zero? Where is my reference? So in order to pick a node and, um, and call that um, our reference, first we need to, pick, uh, to know how many nodes. So let's practice. Here, I start a voltage source. Here there's a node, a different color. Makes the slides nicer. Oh, that's green, no, no. Pink for Mickey. Um, here, two nodes. Everybody agree? Okay, let's pick uh, one node for our reference. And what do we call our re reference? Zero. Oh, what's uh, you're going to see later? You're going to see something like this, right? The ground. <coughs> Why I don't put ground from the beginning? Let me tell you. I teach upper division, and I do have uh, students that come to upper division thinking that the ground is some wire that goes to the ground where the electrons run away into the earth. Okay? You're my students. You'll never make that mistake. What's the ground? The ground is a reference where you're going to measure your potential. You're just determined that that wire is going to be your zero and you're going to measure everything related to that zero, okay? I'll ask you again when you're in upper division. I'll remember your faces, okay? We don't lose electrons. They are just the going around there. They lose energy, but they are there. They are part of the material, okay? They don't disappear. They don't disappear. We'd never run out of electrons. Okay, now, uh, first rule, done. Uh, and this is going to be called ground. Um, and uh, what's this? This um, 
What's the ground? What does the ground do? Tells you where the reference is. Yes, thank you. Tells you where the reference is. Reference for what? For potential, to measure potential. So you know where your voltages are. Okay, step two. Step two, once you have done that, you have selected, uh, sorry, I made it too big. You have selected your node that's going to be your reference. Then you label all the other nodes that you have. Here we only have one. So I am going to label the potential in that node, the second node, as U1. Okay? So if I want to measure the difference in potential, then I'll say, okay, <coughs> I'm going to go from low to high. I'll say U1 minus zero is equal U1, which is equal Vs, right? This is a very simple circuit, okay? So I'm just measuring through the potential that now I know that is zero because I determined that that was going to be zero. Oh, there will be more complicated ones, but once you have your zero and you have this in your head, everything will be fine. Now, now we are going to label the currents. And the currents uh, we call branch currents or um, we're just going to label them. That's whatever way you decide. Okay, total freedom to label the current. So I'm going to put here one current going this way, which I'm going to say this is I1. And then I'm going to put another current here going to the resistor, which I'm going to call I2. Oh, could you have labeled uh, other directions, opposing directions? You could. Let's say <coughs> you don't know, you never saw circuits, just label the current. Could you label the currents going through the wire? You could. You're going to have more equations that will then uh, come to our example here where just say currents are equal, right? But you can still do that. You do what uh, you feel comfortable with, okay? So that's step three done. Step four. Uh, now we are going to, um, uh, that's the thinking that we need to do. Because we committed to the direction of the current, now we go and pus put the plus or minuses for the voltages across our elements. So here, I will remind you that the voltage source, we know that the voltage source will be uh, giving us uh, a given voltage, which we are calling Vs. But just for the sake of learning, I'm going to put the voltage source in the, in, in the box, right? just as if it was a battery. Um, and I'll say, okay, this is our element one. And now, where should be the positive for V element one B? Independent of what I wrote inside the voltage source, in that box, given the current, what did we say? That the current goes into positive and out negative. So. How does our plus minus, our passive sign convention goes here? The minus on the top, minus plus. Oh, but that's different from what we had there. Yeah, because we picked, we committed with the current going that way, and now we have to stick to it. Okay, uh, how do I do uh, voltage element two? I heard positive on top. Everybody agrees? Thank you. V element two. That's the only thinking, remember. Follow the, the passive sign convention. Now we are going to do something that Mickey has been teaching you. Unfortunately, he's not going to be here to do the like this, like that for you. Uh, but we could now <coughs> apply these rules. We build apply these rules to come up with equations that then allow us to find our unknowns. Um, and we can represent them in the matrix form that you guys have been uh, learning so far. 
So you can populate your matrix A um, with values that you get from the equations. Um, your vector x will be your unknowns. And what are the unknowns that we, we want here? The unknowns are always the currents and the potentials, right? Because we know how much it, uh, is the voltage because it's the voltage source given. We know because it's a battery, right? I picked up the, in the lab and I said, for this circuit, I only need three volts. I know what the voltage is. You know what the resistors are because you're learning how to read that code and you say, oh, here's a 100 kilo ohms resistor. This is what I'm going to use, right? So what are your unknowns, potentials and currents? And you populate this um, uh, vector x as your unknowns, and then you get your, um, your knowns, your constants in your vector b after you've done the multiplication, right? This is a methodology. So let's do that because you have a midterm coming on anyway. So if this is our circuit with everything that we labeled so far, uh, what can we do uh, to get this, this matrix populated? I already put here what is going <coughs> on, on our vector of unknowns. It's I1, R2, I2, and U1, right? Those are the things that we don't know about this circuit. Now, I have given you some rules that we can apply in order to uh, form these equations that we could then populate here. Let's do that. So first, let's follow uh, KCL. And we can do KCL for node U1, okay? So what does KCL say? KCL, the current law, Kirchhoff's current law. Current arriving at a junction or at a node is going to be equal to the current going out. Thank you. How, how, what are the currents that are arriving at U1? I1. So I'll say, okay, I1 is equal to, what are the currents that are going out of U1? I2. It's so nice to pick a simple example, right? So this will be our first equation here that we can say I1 minus I2 equals zero. Oh, can we fill up the first uh, line of our uh, A matrix here with this equation? Yeah. We go like this, like that, and what do we have on A, the first, uh, <coughs> the first line of A? 1 minus 1, 0. Equal? 0. Oh! It's just another example of how you can apply the linear algebra that you learned so far. Okay, how are we going to populate the rest now? Any ideas? KVL, KVL, we learned that, uh, that law. We go around the loop and see all the voltages. We can write equations there. And there are other things that we know that we can apply also. What I taught you in the first class, well, first circuits class, the definitions of the elements, right? So if you have a resistor, what law do you apply to the resistor? Ohm's law, because Ohm's law is going to be related, relating unknowns to knowns, which is the resistance. Okay, so let's do that. Next, we'll do that and populate uh, this, um, this simple matrix here, and that's step seven. Use current voltage relationships, the IV curves that looked kind of simple be before. Uh, to populate this or to come up with more equations that will then help you to solve um, this um, or to analyze this circuit. Okay, I'm going to write right here. Um, first, I'm going to use the resistor. Why? Because I just talked about Ohm's law. Is there a specific, um, a specific um, um, 
way of doing this? No, you're just analyzing, right? When you analyze things, look, okay. It looks pretty comfortable here. Yeah, comfy with a hoodie on, you know? That's, uh, I could have started with the hoodie, but you know, first I looked at his foot. It doesn't matter. As long as you analyze the whole picture, you get the right answer. That's how I like to see students comfortable paying attention. Okay, our resistor is element two, right? Element two. So what do we know about element two? We know Ohm's law. What's Ohm's law? V equals, uh, yes, current times resistance. Well, I'm going to be more careful here and say element two, element two. Okay. Well, but we want to solve this problem for our unknowns, which are currents and potentials. Do we know what is V2? What's the definition of V2? What's voltage two V element two? It's a difference in, pot difference in potential. Which potential? <coughs> U1 minus zero. So V2 is U1 minus zero. Everybody sees where that came from? So V element two is equal U1. Okay, now we have um, our potential. So we can rewrite um, that equation such that we say current uh, two times resistance two equals U1. Good? Acceptable? Okay. Um, so that would be which line in our, in our matrix here? Let me erase the two. Oh, that was a big eraser. If you had to do like this, like that, uh, for our, um, well, I, I can fix it later. We can go back. Uh, we can rewrite such that this equation here, I'm running out of space, so let me rewrite uh, underneath. It's going to be I2 times R minus U1 equals zero. Easier now to see how to populate like this, like that, in which line? Third line. Oh, why third line? Because we're going like this, like that, and we are talking about, we start the analysis where he gave us a relation for U1. Okay, so what does that line look like? Zero, R, minus one, yeah, zero, R, minus one. Like this, like that, equals <coughs> zero. Now we need something that will give us I2. How can you get I2? <coughs> yes. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it wouldn't matter. Okay. Another way of doing this, uh, that she said, would it matter if we put in line two, as long as you have the right uh, like this, like that, doesn't matter. Okay. The other thing that we knew about um, this circuit was that we could apply, another way of doing this, we could apply the voltage, um, the voltage element definition of, sometimes speaking and writing, the voltage element definition for element one. That would give us, that's that voltage element. <coughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't um, turn off the, is equal voltage element one is going to be equal zero minus u1. So we get that that voltage element one 
which is the voltage source, is also minus minus Vs because our plus and minus, right? So we also have that U1 is equal to V1, V element 1, which is equal to Vs. Ah. <coughs> I thought I was uh, healthy. Okay. But we also know, we also know for this, the first uh, uh, equation that we got, right, was that um, um, we had that I1 equals I2. So what can we do now? What, uh, how can we fill up the second row? We say if we have 0, 0, and 1, like this, like that, equals what's you want? Yes. Yes. Very good. Okay. This was a very simple uh, circuit, right? You could have solved this without any matrix. <coughs> Can always do that, by the way. Okay. Turns out as I said, these um, algorithms, uh, people want to make uh, circuit analysis very fast. And <coughs> the X department is famous for this. As you go, um, I'll take your question in a moment. As you go inside Corey Hall, if you look, uh, there is like some prizes that, um, um, that Berkeley got for, for models for, for devices. And uh, one of them is this SPICE model. So SPICE model uh, it comes from simulation program with integrated circuit emphasis, which was developed here. It was a student project from Berkeley. So when you're working on your upper division classes, you have many projects. Some of these projects become companies. So this one was a very uh, successful project. It's actually open source, and you can get SPICE models. You can play with SPICE models. I, I did uh, a lot <coughs> for transistors. Um, and then one of my colleagues, uh, Professor Alberto San Giovanni Vincitelli, uh, he opened actually two companies that are very famous. And if you work in the area of circuits, you know about cadence and synopsis. Uh, which basically give you platforms and, uh, and uh, this type of, um, of uh, tools to solve circuits, okay? We are here crawling stages of circuit analysis, so we are going to do everything by hand. But once you are working with the big circuits, um, <coughs> you use these tools. How does it work in a company that actually um, makes silicon chips? There's a team. <coughs> That is the circuit designers. They come up with um, um, new designs for circuits. They work with these tools, they simulate. Um, and then there is a team that works with the fabrication. So they will find tools that uh, can achieve the performance that the simulation is, um, uh, wants to achieve. Then that team will give feedback to the simulation team and saying, hey, uh, that uh, simulation is great, but in my tools, I cannot achieve that dimension. Can you change that and see what happens? And then goes back and forth. Once uh, the two can meet, fabrication and design and simulation, then they send to the fab. So if you work with graduate students that uh, do that, they'll say, oh, then there's a tape out. What's the tape out? It's when you send your design to the factory and they'll actually run the design. Huge huge amounts of jobs in this. And if you read the news about silicon shortage and all the problems that we have in the US today because we don't have manufacturing technology in-house, now <coughs> uh, people are waking up. So if you know how to code and you know circuits, my friends, you're a rich person. Okay but you are only in your first semester, so you can choose the way you go. 
Uh, not everybody needs uh, to only code, okay? But of course, follow your passion. Just uh, sometimes people think that uh, only jobs you can get is, um, is if you're coding. <coughs> no, no, no. I was talking to Thomas in the lab this morning. He's not here, he didn't come to class, so. Uh, and he was saying exactly that. Okay, let's do more examples, shall we? We have plenty of time. Questions so far, you had a question. Oh, because um, because of the definitions. Because when I look here, it's just U1, right? And now when I put uh, my potentials here, it should just be U1. The current was the one that was negative. Go ahead. This one? This one? And we apply KCL, what's KCL? KCL says the currents that are uh, arriving in a node has to be equal to the currents that's going out. So I picked U1 as our node, and then you look there, you see that I1 is going into, so that has to be equal what's coming out, and what's coming out is I2. And then I just wrote like I1 minus I2 equals zero, so we could put in the matrix form. You didn't need to. If you're doing substitution, then you just know, okay, I1 equals to I2. Great, makes sense. It's a loop, right? And then you apply Ohm's law, you solve this. Okay, I'm just connecting the algebra to this. Okay, let's do a voltage analysis for this. So in this course, because you're going to do design, but you're not going to become experts in circuits, uh, but you're going to learn at least what the blocks do. We are going to give you a lot of tools. This is our, your first tool, the voltage divider, which um, I'm going to call an operator. So this is going to be the first operator that you are going to learn for design. Operator. <coughs> okay, what's the, the point of operator? This um, makes um, uh, circuit analysis faster. Because once you see that block, you know, ah, I know what that block does, okay? So I'm going to do everything that we did before, step one, step two, all the way to step seven. And then we can either do substitution or you can do Gaussian elimination if uh, that's your preferred way of solving the circuit. Okay, so I'll give you time to fill up what I'm going to do, okay? So that you get practice. First step, first step, pick a node to label as ground. So first thing you're going to do, write down this circuit, it's simple, and find how many nodes and pick a node to be your zero. Meanwhile, I'm going to get my situation situated. How many nodes? Three. Oh, I like that. Let's see. Note one, um, note two, and note, note three. Okay, did you pick your reference? I'm going to pick the, 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 the lower one here because that's what I picked on the slides that I sent you. If you picked a different reference, stick to it, okay? And then you do the node analysis to the reference that you picked. Did anybody pick a different reference? One fish swimming against the, the, very good. Stick to that, okay? Stick to your guts. Okay, next, what was the step number two? Label the potentials. 
okay, which potentials, the potentials that are going to be in the other nodes, which nodes, the nodes that uh, are not zero. So I'm going to call uh, this potential here E1 and this potential here U2. So far so good? Okay, that was step two. Now, step three. Step three, label the currents uh, through every known wire element. Why known wire? Why known wire? Why are we going to leave the wires out now? What's special about the wire? The current is? Hmm? Defined by the circuit, right? Okay. Mm. The voltage is zero, the current is defined by the circuit. So if we label the other currents, we will have what we have here. Okay. Weaker currents. <coughs> Whichever direction you want, because that's freedom. Freedom of circuit analysis. Yeah? Okay, I'll pick like I picked on the slides. Are you guys talking about uh, this? Do you have questions? No, okay. It's just that the, uh, the way, when you speak comes right here. And I don't know if you want to speak to me. Okay, keep discussing. Okay, I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be my I3 because that's how I had in the slides and then people get confused if I change things in class. This is I1. And then the one that's going to be difficult to see here is I2, going between the two resistors. And then my ground, uh, my, my reference is there. Sounds good? Let's go to step four. What's step four? Now's the thinking, right? You, s you stuck to your current directions. Now you're going to put your voltage elements across following the passive sign convention. Okay, so if I have I3 going down like this, that means it's uh, going into positive, coming out of negative, which this is V element three. <sighs> okay, now I'm going to move to resistor one, our element one current going down, so this is going to be positive, this is going to be negative, and here I'm going to see V element one. Uh, current two, I also put facing down. So I'm going to say V element two. Yeah? And what's the important thing here? Important, because we had to follow the passive sign convention. Simple? Got it? <coughs> um, we'll see. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm here to teach, right? So I, I put that on purpose so that we see what happens, okay? But yeah. That's why I say, if you, if you know circuit analysis, if you know circuits, just hang in there because I want to show how the method is bulletproof even if you never saw circuits before. Go ahead. A fourth current? There are three currents, I3, I1, and I2. I'm just labeling all the currents uh, through the nodes that are not zero. Yeah? Through the elements that are not wires. Oh, you have freedom to do I2 going up if you want. As long as you use the passive sign convention. The computer doesn't question you. This is an algorithm for the computer, right? 
all this analysis that you're going, oh, I'm confused. Why is she doing I3 that way? The computer doesn't care, <laughs> right? All it cares is that you're following the rules. So if you and your design, please do that for me, you decide to make I2 go in the other direction, what are you going to do with the voltage? Uh huh. You follow the rule. Doesn't matter as long as you follow the rules. Do that. It's going to be messy, but it's going to work. Promise. Do it. And then you're going to tell everyone if it worked. Okay. Does anybody remember what uh, the next step was? <coughs> Find out what your unknowns are. So in this case, our un unknowns are I1. We don't know what I1 is. I2 or I3. That was not given to us. Um, we don't know what the potentials are, U1 and U2. We know that this potential is zero because we chose to be zero. We know voltage value. This is a battery voltage source. Could be 9 volts, 3 volts, 1.5 volts, whatever you define. We know that this is a fixed value of resistance, and we know that this is a fixed value of resistance. So our, our x vector of unknowns is going to be here, right? I1, I2, I3, uh, U1, and U2. How many equations do you need to solve a problem with five, equa five, five unknowns? Five, yeah. You should be sharp on this, your linear algebra here. Okay, sounds good. Move on, next step. Uh, what's going to happen in the next step? The next step is, Let's start building up here and writing uh, equations for the laws that we have. The first law, the current law. So the current law, we pick a point and we say the current that is arriving at that point at that junction has to be equal to the currents that come out of that junction. So I'm going to pick one point. Let's do this for U1. And now, for those of you who are uh, independent thinkers and are doing different things, just follow the rules, okay? So you say for one, U1, here's my point, U1. What are the currents that are arriving at U1? According to my drawing here. Arriving at U1, getting to U1, nothing. Right? So, okay. Current arriving at U1 is zero. This has to be equal to the sum of the currents going out of that point. How, uh, what are the currents that are going out of U1 here? I have I3 going this way and I have I1. So, I'll say I1 plus I3. Okay. Can we agree that that can be our first equation here? <coughs> we know that I1 <coughs> plus I3 uh, will be zero because we picked U1 as our reference, okay? All right, now let's do for U2, which is our other potential. Why am I doing for U1 and U2? Because they are our unknowns. So for U2, and I apply KCL to U2. So what is the current that's arriving at U2? I1. I1. And what is the current that is going out of U2? Oh, U2. I2. Okay. So, sorry, uh, I2. So now I'm going to write our second equation, which is I1 minus I2 equals zero. That's our second equation. Oh, how did the professor decide to do this? This is always the question. Okay, what, what we have a problem to solve. We have five unknowns, which are our currents, and we are going to solve everything either for current or for potential. So if I want to relate, apply a law that is for current, I'm going to take the potentials as my reference points. Make sense? Okay, that's why I took I, U1 and U2. And then I did everything with respect to the currents for those points. 
So far, so good? Okay. <clears throat> now, um, let's apply um, okay, the, um, IV characteristics and other things, okay? <coughs> and that's where you can go different ways because there are different rules here. So I like to apply voltage, defini voltage definitions. Why? Because voltage definitions are always a difference in potential. So if it's a difference in potential, there I go. I have voltage. I have one voltage that's known that is Vs. So I can relate a, a number that I know, Vs, to my unknowns, which are the potentials, through the voltage definition. So let's apply voltage definition. Um, here, voltage <coughs> definition. <coughs> What's voltage definition? Voltage is always the difference between potential. So, V element one, V element one. Which one is our element one? This one, okay? So, what would be V element one? Would be the difference in potentials between uh, V element one. I have positive here, negative. Here I have U2 and I have U1. How do I go? U1 minus U2, very good. V element one is going to be U1 minus U2. Okay, oh, that's a good one. Now, let's do uh, for element two. So what's going to be V element two? Well, I look at the potentials, right? Element two is between U2 and zero. So what's V element two? U2 minus zero. Ha, ah, okay. V element two is equal U2, one of my unknowns. Okay, uh, we have another element. So let's do voltage definition for element three. What's element three? It is a voltage source, but that voltage source is between zero and U1. So applying the voltage, voltage definition, what is that? That is U1 minus zero, which is equal U1, but that's equal what? Yes. Ha, ah, what does that mean? Look at this. I already solved one problem. One of our unknowns is known now. U1 is Vs. Yeah? Ask me. You're looking like you have questions. No? Do you have questions? You're looking like, what's going on? No? Sorry, I looked at you. Okay, ask questions. Questions? Can I keep going? Yeah. Hold on, I can't hear. Yeah? Oh, it's random. You can do anything you want. I said it's a freedom of circuit analysis. Pick whatever direction you want, but follow the passive sign convention. Yeah? Because then it would make difference uh, later. <clears throat> and you will see, you will see. Okay. Um, so we applied voltage, uh, voltage definitions. I always like um, uh, voltage definitions. Now we can apply um, element IV curves for the, um, for the um, um, resistors. So I'm going to put here, oh, no, wrong, wrong two element. Um, element IV relation. Are you guys following? The questions I have is always the order. The order doesn't matter. What you have to think is, I need five equations. What are the rules that I can apply to get five equations? I already got three, right? <coughs> or I already got two. 
Now I'm going, and I found out one of, oh, oh, what one of the unknowns is. So keep looking for more equations by applying the rules that you know. Okay. Element one is a resistor. So if I go here and say V element one for the resistor is also equal to Ohm's law, R1 times I1. We already had a, a definition here for um, V element one, right? Which we said it was U1 minus U2. But first I'm just going to do the Ohm's law part. Let's do Ohm's law for V element two, which is the other resistor. V element two is going to be R2 times I2. Yeah? And we already know that V element three is equal Vs. That's what we found out up there. So now I have relationship between V element one that uses Ohm's law and uses potential. Ohm's law has current. Huh? That uh, um, is one of the unknowns that, I, uh, that we have. We have another uh, relationship here that relates V2 uh, with Ohm's law. So we can do substitution yeah, for each element and we get our, our equations. So I'm going to do substitution for element one element one, and what am I going to get? Instead of V element one, I'm going to use U1 minus U2 equals R1 times I1. <coughs> Just putting all of our unknowns together. That can be rewritten as E1 minus E2 minus R1 times I1 equals zero. Let me give ourselves more space here. All right, and this will be our equation three. Following? Yes. we have to get rid of the voltages. We need everything written with respect to potentials and currents. That's what I'm doing here. I'm substituting to take the voltages out and have everything in current and potential. Thanks for asking that. I'm sure other people were wondering too. Oh, okay, element two. So if I do the substitution for element two, <coughs> I can write U2 equals R2 times I2. And then, of course, we don't need to do the substitution for element three because I did up there for you, which is U1 equals Vs. So now we have equation four. Oh, let me rewrite <coughs> for, um, consistency, we have U2 minus R2 times I2 equals zero. This will be our equation four. And this is our five, okay? Now we wrote our problem, we set up our problem, our circuit analysis, we can tell the computer, this is what you have to follow. <coughs> These are the directions I gave you, tell me. What's I1, what's I2, what's I3, what's U1, what's U2? That's what you're going to ask your computer or yourselves how to do it. So now, you could set, um, you could set your, um, uh, your matrix. So I'm just going to copy here all the equations we had. We had I1 plus I3 equals zero. We had 
minus I1 plus I2 equals zero. We had R1 times I1 minus U1 minus U2 equals zero. That was the other equation three. We had R2 times I2 minus U2 equals zero and U1 equals Vs. Five equations, five unknowns. What's the, what's the dimension of your matrix? Yeah, so five by five. So let's say, okay, if I wanted to set up in a matrix form, it would be A, looking like this, your unknowns X here being I1, I2, I3, U1, U2, equal your constants. Okay, so A, X, and B. And then you will populate, let's populate, yeah? Let's do like this, like that, write the matrix. How does it look like? First row. One, zero, one, zero, zero equals zero. Okay, next row. Minus one, one, zero, zero, zero equals zero. Third row. R1, zero, zero, minus one, one, equals zero. Hey guys, in the back, if you can talk outside, that would be great. Okay. Outside, please. Outside, the lecture is still going on. Thank you. Thank you. Education is something that you never know where it comes from. Hold on, questions, questions, many questions. Let me finish the matrix and then. Minus one. On the third row. Oh, it's minus, yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. Fourth row, I got animated because people were just chatting. When we are coming here to the most important result of our class, I'm going to go there and close the door next. Okay, <sighs> inner peace. Um, fourth, fourth row, zero, R2, zero, zero, minus one. There's nothing worse than you talking and other people talking and then you have all this zooming and you're here. Last one, oh, equals to zero. Last row, zero, 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 one, zero. Yes, yay, okay. Oh, now you would have to do Gaussian elimination and it would uh, solve that way if you were a computer and if you love Gaussian elimination. Yes? I'm going to do substitution. Shall we do substitution and see if uh, there was a mistake? So, what do we know? Substitution. I can take, uh, I'm not late right now. There is still five minutes of class, so calm, calm yourselves. So I can say, okay, I1 equals to I3. Uh, minus I3. I can say I1 equals um, I2. Yeah? That's from equation two. Then if I take equation three, um, and I want to solve for I1, okay? So if I take equation three, I can say, okay, R1 times I1 minus U1 uh, do I know what U1 is? Oh, U1 is Vs minus U2. What's U2? U2, if I uh, substitute here, U2 is R2 times I2, right? Equals zero. Oh, but I know that I1 equals I2, right? 
So uh, if I say, okay, I2 equals I1 because I'm solving for I1, then this can be rewritten as R1 I1 minus Vs minus R2 I1 equals zero. Yeah? So I'm going to leave the terms with I1 here. I'll say I1 is equal Vs over R1 plus R2. Correct? Plus, we are putting on the other side, right? Signs change. Okay, there was one extra step. Yeah, got it? The minus goes away. This one, okay, if I take this one. Yes, yes. No, it's right. This one is uh, U2 equals R2 times I2. No minus. Because I, okay. So, if this is I1, what's I2? Same thing, because we said that I1 is equal to I2. And if this is I1, what's I3? Negative. Why? Because everybody was like, why is I3 going in that direction? Oh, computer will tell you, I3, by the way, you told me to go down, but it's negative, it should be going the other way. Okay? Follow the rules and everything makes sense. I'll see you Thursday, hopefully with more voice. So V1 is equal to U1 minus U2, right? Yeah. So therefore the V1 equals I1 R1 would be U1 minus U2 equals I1 R1, which gets you U1 minus U2 minus I1 R1. So it would be negative. Oh, that one was wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thank uh, you. Also, would the I for the ohm Omla be the I going into the resistor? Uh, it's the I that you define for that element. But there's one uh, going in and one going out. Would, do you, the, do one the one going in. So oh, I okay. said I1 is the one going through resistor 1. Okay, so that's the I one that's I2 is the one going through resistor 2, okay. which turns out it's the same current. Perfect. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, <coughs> oh, it's still on. Mm. If for some reason going straight off of this. If we put this one in here, this would be redundant, right? This is negative. It would be uh, redundant. I, I, yes. I did different signs. Oh, you did different. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. Just because 